This is Chiezan, the prior at Sokokoji Buddhist Monastery. Sokozan offers these talks without expecting anything in return. If you value these talks and would like them to continue, please visit our donate page at www.sokokoji.org. Thank you. Greetings. Hope you're all doing well. This morning's Dharma talk is titled D D D B D I. Got it? Don't believe, disbelieve, ignore. Don't do that. And of course, as you said, heard me say, uh, we we it's about being aware of that. When I say don't do that, it helps us, helps you, helps me notice the way you you something shows up and you immediately go to belief, disbelief, or distraction, or whatever it may be. Maybe not. Maybe you don't do that. If you're not doing that at all, you probably can't even stay in a body. So it's just a way of talking about it. Very difficult to use relative concepts and over time as on a spiritual path to use this, the, um, the particular um, algorithm or structure or plan or whatever the path in its uh, relative situation and slowly um, see what that's pointing at beyond the words, beyond the phrases, beyond the description, beyond the logic. It's not even logical. It's not even reasonable. It makes no sense when you start to go in that direction. And the ego will use that. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It will use that to turn you right around and because it wants you in that carnival. The ego mind is terrified of uh, complete openness that doesn't support the belief in a separate being who can get somewhere, who can succeed or fail or anything. <clears throat> too much space, too much not knowing. There probably will not be any credential. That doesn't mean that there isn't some kind of a graduation happening you find that you have a deeper understanding of what it even means to do sitting meditation. You might not be able to put it into words. I'm sure many of you have noticed, uh, as I've noticed, when somebody says, so why do you meditate? What are you going to say to that? Because you're, if you're meditating very much at all, you're not really sure what that is, at least not in words that you, because you already have a sense, because you've been receiving this person you're talking to, you have a sense that they're, they're not, I don't have words to, that will make this understandable to you, because you already have started to leave the relative truth. Will that show up? Not as a credential, as somewhat of as an intuition, where you need less support for this and that, you need less reference point, but you need something more than likely. And so the idea here is <clears throat> notice the way you believe and are attached to things. Notice the way you just shut right down on something before you've really investigated it. And also notice when something shows up that you just distract yourself from. And with each person, it will have its own kind of chemistry or texture or formula or ingredients. It'll be, it'll be very personal to you more than likely. So when I say don't, just don't add, don't subtract, don't divide, don't, 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 don't. I think he gave a talk about 10 years ago called the, the three donuts. No, and that was the three don'ts. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, wasn't it? Not funny to you? <laughs> did, did that feel like criticism? <laughs> Didn't you get enough sleep? <laughs> I know what you want to say. Shut up. <laughs> need help? No. What kind of help do you need? All that I can give. 
can get. Okay. Well, I feel the same way about this monastery. Notice that. Trend. <laughs> <laughs> we need all the help we can get so that we can do what? So we can help people in this neighborhood, in this community. We need to come out from this training center for the mind so, so that we can be sane. So when we go out to help others, we aren't just taking our unexamined aggression out and pushing people around based on what we think would be helpful to them. Big misunderstanding happens all the time. There's all kinds of helpful people. Did I use too high of a pitched voice for that? Okay, thanks. How should I sound? Like I, like I normally sound. Okay, help us. That's all I'm saying. And it's a silly way of doing it, but um, that's what I'm doing. So help. If you, if you can, go to the website, go to the donate page if you can help support us. And we'll, as we go along, we'll say more. We're still, we purchased the one building down at the end of Anderson Court, big giant uh, building over a hundred years old. And we need to do a lot down there. <laughs> yeah, don't we? I don't see her here. Where's Kelly at? Where are you, Kelly? She's at a birthday party. She's at a birthday party. Well, that makes sense, choiceless. So help us. So coming back to don't believe, disbelieve, ignore. Those three are the three poisons of, expressed in this way. And the idea is as you're training your mind, as you're sitting down and uh, um, training your mind to see what something is clearly, uh, this that kind of observing or receiving will start to show up at the kitchen table, at your workplace, in your relationships might not be comfortable when you begin to see through your preconceptions and see how much you've actually protected yourself from seeing the truth by your beliefs. This is what belief looks like. This is what disbelief looks like. And of course, ignorance is worse than that. You might as well have your head uh, in the ground. It, it, it is an awareness practice. And what shows up over time is not something else, not something to be the person who becomes more aware or better or ahead of everything, but this the, that aspect of consciousness that used to look like somebody starts to come apart. But it won't come apart if you push. It won't come apart if you pull. And it won't come apart if you ignore because it is uh, the structure of it is uh, based on the circularity that needs to be seen first. We need to see that we're actually going in a circle before we can see what is fundamentally true for ourselves. I can take some questions or I can continue either way. If you have questions, let me have them, please. Michelle Vine. Michelle. It seems like the believing and ignoring comes quickly, swiftly, and just automatically. That's so. awareness. You see that happen. That's awareness. Don't fix it. Don't, when I say don't do it, I don't literally mean look at it and we'll just stop doing that because it can't be. You have to actually run into that if you continue to look at that, look at that, it's a continual failure of not being able to stop that kind of uh, aspect of the three poisons, that shutting it down, turning away, extremely hard, especially if it's very personal, more. I, guess, I mean, my question is, you know, how do I stop that? Yeah. And I know that I, well, it will, I'm saying I can't stop You can't that. stop it, but the ego uh, can't particularly, that self-centered part of the consciousness can't, but you can observe uh, how that works. You can observe it and to go too much beyond that, starts to get more and more conceptual because it's language, but it, it, might, it may or may not serve you. Uh, there, are, there are teachings that are very conceptual that talk about this, and I would say just continue. Sometimes you may, um, some people are very, uh, um, very much like, say, the 30 verses. Some people like listening to or reading or studying or a Dogen. Some people uh, prefer uh, uh, the Lanka. Uh, some people don't. So. And so it's a, it's quite variable. 
to use those teachings, those structures, and the Dharma talks uh, to help you see, support you conceptually, so you can continue to look at the, the mind that isn't isn't particularly conceptual. Go ahead. So over time, does some of that activity kind of slow down just on its own, or is it just always there and always... You want me to pick one of those? You gave me an or. Does it do this or does it do that? Yeah, you might not do either one. You might not be able to track it in a way to get any kind of a credential where you would say to somebody, well, that was that way for a while, but then that finally slowed down. Perhaps not. The ego, the self-centered aspect of the consciousness is very sneaky and very um, paranoid in such a way that it can make anything, use anything to continue to get some kind of fuel, some kind of support for taking any kind of position on anything more. That's why we take a position of the vow, the vow to be with all things, that's a strong position. And we, we take a position in front of the wall. We're going to sit down, bring everything to a minimum, minimalize everything, hold very still. It's the, the original social distancing that started centuries, millennia. Is, there, is that such a word, millennia? Or is it... Or, 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 or. So we, we need to slow down and look at the movement, observe the movement, watch the movement without doing any one of those three. Just observe, just observe, just observe. So that the consciousness itself uh, starts to return to its original nature, which is without a self, without the artifice called me and the war I have to fight. Shoto bowing. Um, with don't believe, disbelieve, or ignore. Um, you mentioned that how we can't stop those things, but we can look at that failure. How does how does that failure um, when you encourage us to, to not do something and we we see that failure? How does that um, what does that do differently than just looking at it? Might not do anything differently. There might not be any action coming out of that. There may be actions initially. Uh, people are wired differently, have a different relationship to karma. This is some of what the Buddha families uh, talk about, different ways of covering up, different ways of, of uh, destroying, different ways of, of, of um, fluffing things up to protect us. So it might not do anything. Will that be good enough? Oh, no. is there, uh, what is the difference between disbelieve and doubt? Of course, words, we could look up the dictionary definitions, but the way it shows up here is the disbelief is just it's, it's more deliberate. It's something you're, you're kind of you're doing that, more of an action. It's more, more like an outflow. Something happens. That, I don't know, you know, sometimes it's, it's said out loud quite offhandedly. I don't believe that almost sarcastically. So that would be one form. And then doubt would be something that you're looking at. It might be something that you might want to believe because it would feel better if you could just believe in that. So it could show up in different ways. Sometimes the word doubt or the whole idea of the concept of, of doubt is used. In the, in the Zen tradition, there's even a teaching where you develop great doubt. And I would say if that's teaching is happening with a true teacher, then that's also anything can be used as a teaching. If, if it's coming out of the, the reality of, uh, of, of an individual, uh, if they're out of their realization as a teacher. More? Further questions? Online, any further questions? Sir? Why do we need a living teacher as opposed to just the teachings of someone who saw the truth? <laughs> there again, situational variable. But the tendency to, to go in and just clamp down on it and just get your own version of the teachings is pretty powerful. It's not that you couldn't realize what this is. I think it's possible to 
the causes and conditions that arise as your particular karma bring you into this uh, situation. Uh, there are a few people, uh, probably a, a lot more than a few, but there are, there are a few people who, uh, uh, who we know about that have been what I call spontaneous realizers. They didn't seem to be doing anything to try to realize anything, and then their whole identity came apart. I'm not saying that they necessarily realized at a complete realization like the Buddha. They might have just realized that there, there's no solid self and would proceed from there in different ways. We can talk about various people, but I'd rather just keep it to your question. So I, I think it just shows up different ways. Um, and I, all the only thing I have is I would not be doing this if I hadn't had two amazing teachers that taught. Well, I, it's like I needed this kind of a teaching to just even get me on the path. And then I had to run into someone like Coven. And that teaching was powerful for me. I can't put it into words. It was so powerful. What are you doing here? I just Why? Why? Tell me. I have to. Go ahead. Sen Chi Bowing, you said that belief, disbelief, and ignoring are ways that we protect ourselves from the truth. Is the intention to see the truth does the intention loosen up our need to protect ourselves? It does. This is why we study so many different ways and we do it as a Sangha so we can have the, the understanding there's a community of people that are also trying to do this with the support of the, the teaching, of the, uh, the teacher, the teaching and the community doing it together rather than some kind of a, a hermit cave in, on the mountaintop. Although you might have to go off for a while by yourself every now and then to, to train your mind by yourself. So I think the intention is very powerful. This is why we return to the Buddha, the Dharma Sangha. We can use that structure to just help us do that. Even though it might feel kind of silly. What the hell am I doing here? It almost needs to feel that way somewhat, and then you need to do it anyway so that you can see the form. It's about the awareness of what happens when you receive uh, refuge or you take refuge or whatever you want to talk about it when you do prostrations. Uh, and quite often the ego is going to be full of comments about what, what the hell do you think you're doing? How's this going to help you falling on the floor, worshiping somebody? I mean, all kinds of commentary. And how you work with that uh, will be determined pretty much by your own karma and your connection or your, uh, your connection with your, your teacher and your teacher's community and the way that that teaching and that, or that teacher presents these teachings. More? Since you bowing, I was just wondering about the scariness of the truth, or you, why? You're afraid of the truth? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's, and that may not happen for everyone. But we, we all, boredom might come up, or just like non-entertainment, or any number of things. But scariness is, the downside is it's scary. The, up, the upside is if it starts to get a little scary or Difficult. Uh, it's just the, as uh, Coben said, falling apart, falling apart, and you you get to actually watch it fall apart without trying to reform it or restructure it or patch it up or make it all better, but actually go into it and actually receive it, receive it as it is, no matter what it is. More. She show. She show. Uh, back to the three acts of uh, believing, disbelieving, or ignoring, is there a texture to that act? Like there is a texture, there seems to be a texture to various forms that show up. Is there a texture to these three acts of ignoring, believing, or uh, pushing away? But, uh, 
the way you ask the question, I would say I would say yes, but that there, there's not one necessarily one comment uh, that's going to cover everyone or every situation. I would start with just you don't have to take some kind of inventory, but just look at the way you grasp belief or the way you reject disbelief or the way you just distract yourself or go another direction in any given situation. It can be something as simple as watching the news. That might be the best place to do it because there's you're going to get all three of those there. Just watching someone else that has no mind training, even if they're very intelligent, and someone else has no mind training that their intelligence has, has twisted around into a knot and they're becoming a, I don't know, you can give it all kinds of names, a fascist maybe, or someone who wants to control others, judge them, tell them how to live their lives, what to do with their bodies. We don't know what that, that's, that needs to be received, not objected to. And if, 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 uh, if your objection to that comes up, then that needs to be received. So that might be the texture of it. The texture of it may be your own reaction uh, to something uh, may show up as a texture of your emotions, your feelings. Just, I don't like that. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't, that's terrible. They shouldn't be doing that. I, they're wrong. I mean, I could go on and on. So it's about receiving that. And, and also, uh, the area here that seems to get difficult uh, is when we try to find a standard so that we don't have to do it moment by moment by moment by moment by second by second. You have to continually return, return, return. I notice you're smiling, <laughs> and that wasn't a joke. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying by the texture of it. It's, it's the, the rawness would be another word for texture, that you see that. And, and uh, this doesn't mean that we go the other way and make a joke of everything. Everything is, you know, silly. But we don't hesitate to allow our emotions to come and go and come and go without attachment, without rejection, and without uh, shutting down, uh, distracting ourselves, ignoring it. That's that's a powerful practice. Very difficult to do that as what as an accomplishment, because you are always going to be. You know, it's, it's always the path. Everything is always the path, and that's how you live in enlightenment. You don't really accept, reject, or validate or anything, but you don't miss anything. Difficult to put into words. So, when you when you Valley, um, in watching the news this morning, you, you brought up uh, fascist. Is that before I yelled at the television or after? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I find myself weighing in on the belief part of dangerous rhetoric like that by a small group of people that seems to instigate That's, fear what's with your question? Its intention. So when I look at this community that we're living in, it makes me want to pick it up and run away to another country. So how okay. then how can I look at the belief of others and not buy into fear that maybe find out who you are but you have no doubts about it you have no doubts it's it's so clear because you've realized who you are and what this is and it won't be thoughts there won't be anything about it you may there won't be any hoopla there'll be no celebration it won't even be an occurrence. It will definitely not be an experience. But it's, it can be experiential, or expert, but the actual realization it doesn't actually occur. It's, it's, it doesn't have a reference to it. I'm not saying there aren't other teachers who will say this completely differently, and I will not fight with them about anything. I would say, fine, go ahead and do whatever you like to do. Chisho. Uh, back to the answer that you gave, uh, is my question of even looking for texture and, uh, an indication of uh, me ignoring the ignoring what is in front of me? But, I, it doesn't look like it. Just looking for taking the, the structure of a concept or an idea or a feeling or a belief and then going to the texture of it uh, tends to not, not that you're trying to get rid of it or uh, take away its, its uh, 
it's a credentials or something because the feeling is the credential. It feels this way. And so therefore we tend to believe it because it feels this way. And so going into the texture of the feeling takes you deeper into what it actually is and takes you doesn't doesn't do much. It's not going to do it for you, but it will give you some kind of a clue that there's a lot more to understand here than just your lamination of, of uh, concepts and ideas and judgments over the top of everything. You start to go into the feeling of that situation. Contact, feeling, contact, contact and feeling. So rather than contact and goes right into uh, craving or right into something else. Just it's my way of saying it would be just look at the feeling, just watch the feeling, and then you'll you notice the migration of the feeling uh, into desire and the migration from desire into grasping or rejecting or shutting down. That, that, so that's what I'm endeavoring to talk about by uh, using the word texture. Junchu. Junchu Bowie, there is a question from Ian in Kalamazoo. Go ahead. Is it possible to have faith in the three jewels without believing in them? Yes. But the kind of faith we're talking about in, uh, in uh, Buddhist ideas and faith isn't, uh, it's more like giving something the benefit of the doubt, considering it being respectful of what is, uh, in other words, not, not jumping into it with belief or disbelief or ignoring, but being meeting it where it's at and sometimes that kind of faith is uh, is at once uh, scary and heartbreaking. Those ca those two can come together because it's uh, it's like uh, the what uh, Jason was talking about the poem uh, and trust in the heart. It's that kind of a uh, moving into it. That doesn't seem to be possible unless there's a great deal of sitting meditation where you've where you've stopped objecting to who you are, agreeing with who you are, or ignoring who you are. This takes quite a bit of time. And, and there, even though we look for a credential that we're doing better or that there's progress on the path, uh, the, the very looking for that tends to take us away from what you may realize in your own mind it is progress. Uh, like, uh, I don't know if it's a Dalai Lama, uh, the, the progress is, uh, I, I have to paraphrase him because I can't remember what he said, but something like, uh, um, I'm probably way away from it, but it's just you you're you're friendly not only with your own mind stream but with everyone else's so you're friendly you're you're no longer at war with anything you're not at war, even though your own feelings are might be raging this way and might be triggered by this and that no longer fighting that anymore totally responsible completely not an ego consciousness itself your actual nature if it could be anything at all at all would just be consciousness whether there's a body here or not being responsible. Junchu. Junchu Bowing. Do we need to see the content or the story of a belief for it to lose its grip? You probably need to look at the story about it or the description. But with as little addition or subtraction or don't do any math with it if you can and eventually you can just the story will just come through it comes in the front door and the back door is open and keeps right on going you see it but it, it can't find uh kind uh that aspect of consciousness doesn't curl up into a ball and believe that or grasp that but this doesn't mean it doesn't feel it feeling is not grasping find out you can you can have tremendous feelings of anger or sadness or disappointment without that giving any fuel at all to this to, to the narcissism that's why it's called the mahayana the open way no self put others before yourself even though there aren't any Further questions? Shoto Bowing, um, you brought up the title of the poem, The Trust in the Heart, Heart Mind. How is that different than believing our emotions? Um, 
So believing your emotions is you have the emotion and then you abandon the emotion or you believe the emotion and then it, it takes you into who caused it, why it's happening, how it can stop and all of the other materialistic ideas, spiritual materialism about how to fix it, do away with it, stop it from happening. And uh, trust in the heart would be the way it's talked about there would be just receive. It smells like shit, just receive. It smells like uh, chrysanthemums. Do chrysanthemums have a fragrance? Somebody in the back row, I can't tell who it is, went like this. Well, smell them anyway. <laughs> Whatever's there, receive that. Just receive. Receive that. So that would be more like the idea of trust. What comes to the door, allow that to come in. This doesn't mean you act that out in some kind of an idealistic way where you start to feed everybody who comes to your door, though you might. More. What about the feeling? The what about the feeling? Yes. Myself, like I can feel a sort of like love of myself, even in yep. this, when I speak. It's like so much um, like self love, like an attachment. Or, yes. Love, like I really love. <laughs> well, that's I can see why. <laughs> Just so what, and and but it's it's uh, yeah. So that's a feeling. Yes. And, yes. Uh, so you what do you do? With that? Don't do anything with it. Just receive it. The most important uh, feedback that I can give to anybody. If you're not already doing a lot of sitting meditation, sit a lot. Sit down, hold still, watch the movement. You don't have to be a Buddhist. You don't have to be, uh, you don't owe me anything. But it might be uh, important in your practice, especially with a question like that coming up. Don't get rid of that. That's, uh, that's just, it has no uh, val validity beyond what you give to it. So just let it be what it is. It's just something that arises. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. It's an appreciation for yourself. Don't do anything with it. You, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't yeah. fix it. You can't fix it. Nothing to fix. Nothing's broken. Nothing is broken. It sure the hell looks like it when you look at the world and you look at the news and you look at the people incredibly mistreating each other. It's, a mis it's an incredibly difficult, painful misunderstanding. But the basic misunderstanding, I'll tell you two misunderstandings. There's quite a few more. <laughs> I don't want to tell you the two. Uh, the one is to be aware of the misunderstanding that started from beginning of time of passion, aggression, and ignorance, the huge avalanche called the Peloponnesian Wars, the huge avalanche called the, the First World War, the Second World War, and all the politics of experience ramming around this way, looking for some kind of control out of uh, passion, aggression, ignorance, greed, and envy, and avarice, and all of that happening. That, that's been going on. That landslide has been going on forever. When I say forever, you know, not forever, just a few million years. But it's going on, and there's a differentiation and, and desire differentiation of desire is happening in such a way that we can't we, we can't get a handle on that even though we try to vote and have politics and and run for office so we do something we keep it to maybe to a minimum until there's another world war or until the saber rattling in the form of nuclear weapons becomes so intense that you know there's a good chance we won't make it because there's just so much uh, when we say make it in other words continue as a, a, a species doesn't look good I'm not predicting any future events, but it doesn't look good. I mean, any front you look on, uh, nuclear, weather, uh, politics, just the wars that are going on. But what, what can you do? This is the other mistaken identity. Uh, the mis first one is a mistaken identity that there's someone who's right and someone who's wrong. The other one is this, this there, that you're a solid being. Find out who this is. Liberate yourself so that no matter what happens in the world, you don't miss it. 
by blaming, you don't miss it, by covering it up. And you don't miss it by believing, disbelieving, cover any one of those. You you see what it is deeply. This is it's always about awareness. It's never it's not even about staying alive. I'll believe anything I say. If this helps you or makes some sense to you or resonates with you in such in, in a in a certain way, then yeah. <laughs> and go to the website. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, then, then continue to listen. You don't owe me anything. You don't need to pay anything for this. But I, I want to tell you, I'm highly motivated in, just in the last um, 15, 20 years to, to, not before then, I didn't know what to do with anything. I didn't have any idea. Go ahead. What is, so you have a moment, like you say something, you can't fix that. And so there's a moment of, Okay, so near as I can understand, can't quite hear you, but I'm thinking, how do you keep from making it into a story, Michelle? Yeah, like you have a moment yes. where the story that, that you said that you can't fix that. And so there's a moment where you go, okay, oh. And wait, 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 stop, stop. What you did right there, you say, okay, oh, that's, those are fillers and those get, those clog up your awareness. <laughs> yeah, isn't that, a, isn't that crazy? Don't do it. No, no outflow. And also don't contain it. Don't hold back, but just watch, watch the, when you say anything, when you make any kind of a phrase filler, any kind of uh oh or oops or any of that, that actually stops you from observing. So you ha the, the awareness has to be radical. When I say radical, I don't mean outlandish or rude or aggressive. I mean, it has to be at the root of the consciousness, which we can't find. But you can get really close to that, that understanding by sitting down and watching the way the mind keeps vomiting all this junk. Watch that, observe that, watch that, observe that, observe it, observe it. So that that, as, that observing aspect of the consciousness uh, uh, slowly starts to, it's, it's not aggressive, but it kind of leaks out in front of the muscle-bound ego in front of it, and you start to lead your life with your awareness, on receive, on receive. You receive everything, everyone, everywhere, all the time. And if you don't receive it, then you're extremely, even painfully aware of the way you're shutting things down. Just, just receive. You can do this. Just continue. So, bowing. Are emotions and outflow bowing? The emotions are outflows, but they're 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 dependently arisen. They don't belong to anyone. And no matter what, how intense a feeling you have, it does not have an uh, does not have a. Have a of person, uh, some identity who's feeling that. That's something we invent in order to protect the unreal self, the ego. It, it will actually hurt other people to keep from feeling. It will, it will, it will blame and will stop that person up to and even in, in killing that person, especially if there's a whole nationalism behind that. Like I, my, my personal example of my father, was killed in World War II on um, uh, March 16th, uh, 1945. He was 26 years old, went to a war that he didn't want to go to. But at that time, you had to go. You didn't have a choice. You had to go and fight for your country. Suspicious, isn't it? Yeah. More? So, do emotions cover up the truth? Bowing? They're not separate from it. But when we individuate and we make it our own thing, then then we get to function. Then the identification with the body, mind, uh, body, speech, and mind is so powerful that we start to uh, function in terms of protecting ourselves, or on the other end, joining some kind of a movement. More? Not very clear, is it, Brian? Brian. Uh... I 
as applied to yourself in the last 15 to 20 years, what is the context of the word motivated? What, what, is, what is it you want to know? You said you were motivated for the last 15 or 20 years. What is the context? The, the vow to save all beings, be with all things. The Bodhisattva vow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Isan. I'm bowing. I would like to understand better um, the distinction between saving all beings and serving people. Wow. It's, it's very situational and it's going to be different for each person. Uh, it's, you know, you, you've been, uh, your whole life you've been a nurse. You just recently retired, isn't that true? So were you saving all beings, serving all beings? How did you, how would you characterize your life over the last number of years before you retired? Peace on buying. So that's what I've been thinking about, that I dedicated to my life to serving people. And you can retire from serving, apparently. <laughs> but I, it seems to me the vow to save all beings is a different thing altogether. It's and I'm trying to understand that better. So the, the serve all beings could be just literally being in, a, in an area, of, you know, a mundane area of life where you're you're at service. You help people. You're a nurse. You're a doctor. You're, you know, any number of things would function that way. And I think people, it looks like people do that in different ways and it's necessary. But the spiritual path is about uh, going a little bit further than that, maybe quite a bit further than that. And it's about seeing the true nature of otherness, the true nature of the apparent other, the person that you're serving or that you're saving or that you're being with. Uh, I think it's a, uh, the whole area could be talked about many different ways. And I think setting up any kind of a standard there, um, it's, it has to happen through your path, through your practice. I'm bowing, I guess I'm, is, you often say in terms of like compassion, it's not something you do, it's something you are. Is the vow to save similar? something you are yes it starts out as you're just working on that trying to understand what that is you're looking at your own identity you return to the wall you return to the if you're if you receive vows which you have received lay precepts you return to the teacher the teaching in the community or the buddha the dharma and the sangha however you want to that shows up and you uh, train your mind and you study the the buddhist teachings as they've been handed down through the lineage for centuries uh, all the concepts the ideas different ways of pointing at this, different ways of even practicing it. Some Buddhist uh, Nichiren uh, practices are basically just chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which is, a, uh, is an appropriate practice. Some people, that's what they need to do. So, but it's, it, it becomes the idea is to change so that you're trying to actually receive and any kind of production coming out is to um, have a strong connection with the, the teachings of the Buddha as your teacher, as the community, and as the teachings uh, show up for you personally or for anyone personally. Um, as I s talked about before, if you if you actually realize the vow, there's there's no one left. If you, if you actually are doing that, there's no there's no person there that's saving a bunch of people. It's a, it may show up very situationally, like it still does for you, even though you're you're retired from nursing. Still, you're somebody asks for your help, you you help them. Okay. Very, very difficult to find a particular standard where we can. Oh, now we understand mm. what that is. That's why it's sometimes said, "Be with all things." That way, you can do it in your mind. Every every thought is a living being. Don't fight with anything. No more. Mm. End the war by watching the way you can't end the war. End the war in your mind stream by watching the way you or me or any of us go in there and start haggling around with, it, with you know, it's uh, conflicting emotions. Well, a part of me wants this and a part of me wants that. We divide ourselves up so that we can, can do what? Keep that ego running. 
we, we buy into create separation. We create wars in order to, with ourselves and with our family, our partners. We have a feeling we blame somebody. So the beginning would be observe, sit down, hold still, and watch the way you want to abandon what arises or what caused it or who caused it, anything but just receive it. It's your, uh, when I say your, I don't mean your ego. I'm saying this whole dynamic of consciousness that is not a separate being from anything or anyone, anywhere. I don't believe any of that. I don't believe what I say. Look at it for, your, for yourself. Don't look away. Thank you. Yes. Jishin has typed something in here. See if I can get it up. See it. What is the act of vomiting the junk by the mind? You heard me say that, huh? Damn. I take that back. I take the vomit back. Yeah. What I'm trying to say there, Jishin, is that Sometimes it feels like that's what some kind of, uh, we can't, we just, it's just a, a knee jerk, or it's just like if you vomit, you don't say, mm, I think I'm gonna vomit. Although occasionally, I guess we do maybe force a, a vomit. It's like a sneeze, we don't just decide to sneeze. Can anyone just up and sneeze? Or down and sneeze? Go ahead, sneeze. Everybody sneeze on a count of three. No, I'm not gonna do that. It's a little bit too silly, but it's that kind of a thing that is hooked up that way uh, that it just it just comes raging out. And what do we do with that? Don't blame yourself. Don't blame others. Don't and don't ignore it. Just notice that that spontaneity that comes out as a as an expression of the combinations of causes and conditions that, that get together in your body. It causes a, a sneeze to come about. It's an outflow that is uh, that is a. Uh, it's a great example of dependent origination. If nobody did it, if somebody sneezed, you can't be blamed for a sneeze. Michelle Bowen. Michelle. Is this, is this a 100% physical practice? Or uh, is this 100% physical? So <laughs> that kind of a question, uh, I, I follow, I think I, I see what you're asking about, but I'm saying the body, the physical uh, body-mind situation are not, they're separated, just like my hands are separated, but fundamentally they're not. They're my hands, this one and this one. And so, so there's all kinds of duality, polarity, and otherness happening everywhere. It's a great uh, illusion. But the body and mind are not, are not as separate as they seem. Um, I wish I could come up with a, a good example for that. But it's there. Uh, synchronizing, this is something Trunk Parambhaji talked about, is synchronizing a body and mind so that they're, they're not doing other things. One of the body's doing this, driving a car, and your mind is off uh, going over an argument with, you had, uh, with your employer or with your employee. Uh, and you, you're fine driving the car. Your body's turning at the right place. You find yourself in your driveway, not somebody else's. But yet, consciousness is, uh, can get, can do, can get in all kinds of different dynamics where things just happen spontaneously. It's just, uh, it's amazing. It's like the example I like to use, uh, is a, is a, a Chazan, uh, was a, a, a baseball player and has, has pretty strong reactions. And if you stand next to him and, and hold something up and drop it, he catches it. But he doesn't think, I think I will catch that spoon. And then he catches it. He just has the spoon in his hand extremely fast. So body, mind, uh, consciousness is doing that in so many directions. We don't even know about that example is very simple, very interesting. But the mind is uh, powerful and going so many different ways. And it goes, runs much more smoothly and much more harmoniously and much more with a sense of fancy word would be equilibrium. If there's no warfare going on there, especially warfare based on ideas and concepts and blaming and all of the other things that happen in the mind stream that kind of tear us apart. As the Buddha's dharmas talk about conflicting emotions about the nature of anything.
further questions? It's, I don't see, I think there's one more, Grant. <laughs> Jishin, you're gonna, not gonna let go of that vomiting word, are you? Thank you, is it vomiting a healthy reaction of the mind? I don't know, is, is vomiting healthy? Isan, Do Dr. Mark, is vomiting healthy? Isan bowing, it uh, depends. It's what? <laughs> it depends. Uh-oh. I think it's healthy. <laughs> okay. Okay. I would, good reference there. <laughs> so it's a, the, uh, my using that, it just means that it's, it's like a sneeze. It's something that happens that can happen very spontaneously. It gives you an idea how, how little control we really have over things. And sometimes when we do go in and try to control things, it's based on a bunch of half truths, something that's kind of true, but not totally. So that's why I say, one of the basic things I say all the time is don't do anything unless you have to. And that way you get more of a chance to see what's actually occurring rather than your spontaneous reaction based on hope for something better, fear of something worse, or just what most of the world is doing at doing is jumping to conclusions. Take a final question and then we can uh, close for the day. Any question on Zoom? Any question here in the Zendo? Okay, we can close that. Thank you so much. <laughs>